0.32% of the world's population. That's the percentage of people living in Australia. With around 26 million inhabitants, it ranks as the 53rd most populous country in the world. As a continental landmass, the country covers over 7.0 million square kilometers. Moreover, Australia is highly isolated and is thousands of kilometers away from most of its neighbors. However, Australia boasts the 13th largest economy globally. Australia is ranked as the 20th wealthiest in the world. But how and why are Australia and Australians so wealthy? With such a significant global economy, Australia's GDP exceeds $1.6 trillion. In numbers, Australia falls below Brazil, primarily due to its population level. Brazil has around 214 million people, while Australia has 25 million nearly 10 times fewer. So, if in Brazil we have 10 times more people for almost the same amount of money, Brazilians are 10 times poorer than Australians. Because they have nearly the same value as Brazilians, with 10% of their population. And automatically, an Australian citizen is 10 times richer than the Brazilian population. The purchasing power of Australians is higher than countries like Canada, the United Kingdom and France. Another important point to mention is that the average Australian salary ranks 8th highest in the world. All these data are impressive, but when we look at Australia's population map, there is another surprise. More than 97% of it is empty. Australia is a powerhouse in mineral extraction, being one of the countries with the most minerals in the world. And these minerals not only meet the country's internal needs, but are also exported in large quantities to various regions worldwide. In 2020, Australia was the world's largest producer of lithium, and this is a compound used in most of the batteries we use in our daily lives. In our digital age, despite the imminent energy crisis that will soon affect the world, we continue to produce more and more electronic components that require batteries. The tremendous growth and popularization of electric cars have exponentially increased the demand for lithium in all its processes. Extraction, exportation, purchase and sale, because electric car batteries use lithium as a basic component. In 1913, Henry Ford created an electric car with the help of Thomas Edison. They used nickel batteries, but the project didn't move forward. In 1975, the Brazilian brand Gurgel presented its first electric car to the world. The car was slow, not surpassing 50 km per hour despite the speedometer indicating up to 120 km per hour. It had 10 conventional LED batteries, with a range of up to 80 km, but this also didn't progress. It wasn't until Tesla popularized battery-powered electric vehicles, primarily using lithium, that things changed. Practically all car brands followed the trend and began manufacturing their electric cars with lithium batteries. And as Australia is a giant producer of this raw material, they took full advantage of capitalizing on this resource and maximizing the ore sales potential. The opportunity keeps getting better, especially in Asia, where electric vehicles dominate the streets. China reported in 2020 that over 40% of vehicles sold were electric. Continuing on this theme, Australia is also the world's largest producer of aluminium, and it is the third largest diamond producing nation. Minerals are valuable commodities that can be used to amass great wealth, but this is not the only secret behind why Australia is so rich. Another standout area of Australia is agriculture, with large parts of the country occupied by plantations. These are responsible for producing food exported to various neighboring countries. Australia has various climates, from entirely snow-covered fields to dry and uninhabitable deserts. Thanks to this variation, it is possible to cultivate all kinds of food. Fruits or vegetables found only in cold and humid, or hot and dry climates, all can be grown in Australian soil. In the north, the country features tropical conditions and forests. In the center, one of the world's most famous deserts, the outback. And finally, in the cold south, there is snow. Australia is also one of the countries with the largest livestock production globally. Especially in ovine livestock, sheep and goats, ranking as the world's second largest in this production. It's also the world's second largest beef exporter. Australia's major trading partners are China, Japan and South Korea. These three countries buy a considerable amount of raw materials from Australia every year, totaling about $500 billion. 
The Human Development Index considers various factors such as education, health, income, and life expectancy. In the Human Development Index, Australia ranks 8th, being one of the 10 countries with the highest human development rates globally. Scoring high in this ranking means that the country has excellent infrastructure, quality education, with a well-educated population, and overall good quality of life, suggesting that the local population is happy. This doesn't mean Australian is perfect, but by excelling in all these resources, it's impossible for the country not to have a strong and healthy economy. Countries with low education rates, conflicts and violence hardly ever find a path to economic health. One of the best examples is Congo, in Africa, one of the richest countries in the world when it comes to only natural resources. This means that they have more natural resources there than in most other countries. Its population is about 90 million, and theoretically, it would have everything needed to reach the status of Australia. But the Republic of the Congo is a highly corrupt nation, with very low education rates. With an economy of 50 billion, Congo is a poor nation having nearly the same resources as Australia. Another important factor for the Australian economy's performance is immigration. The Australian immigration process is focused on highly qualified professionals. The government has a system for acquiring foreign professionals to facilitate immigration. In other words, if there is a shortage of doctors, teachers or scientists in a specific area, immigration rules become more lenient for these professionals. This allows these professionals to legally move to Australia. Australia's education system is responsible for virtually all the country's wealth and is considered one of the best in the world. Students from all over the world come to Australia to learn and experience some of the most modern and advanced teaching methods available. But besides this, there are fewer other reasons why Australia is so rich. Among them is tourism. Australia is one of the world's primary tourist destinations. In 2019, revenue from Australia tourism surpassed the record-breaking mark of $42 billion. Some of the most visited attractions include the unbelievable architecture of the Sydney Opera House, the grandeur of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, Darling Harbour, which features a maritime museum, convention center, and a huge aquarium, Kadaku National Park, Sydney's Botanical Garden, the Whiff Sunday Islands, several beaches, and Tasmania, which is a paradise of its own. Across the territory, you can find paradisiacal locations, or places with bold and modern architecture. Therefore, Australia was considered the destination with the most fascinating attractions in the world. Currently, the real estate sector is undergoing significant development. This is great for the country's economy and the government's tax collection, but not so great for the Australian citizen wanting to buy a house. This real estate movement begins with the country's reputation. Since Australia is a paradise, safe, rich and well-structured in various aspects, the nation attracted millionaires from all over the world who wished to buy homes in the region. The high demand for house purchases significantly raised the real estate prices. Those wanting to live in Australia are paying increasingly higher prices for it. The most desired cities in the country have limited space, especially in their most prestigious or touristic regions. This scarcity drives prices up. The areas with the most expensive properties are usually in Sydney. The prices of these properties continue to rise. For instance, in 2000 a house in Sydney cost around $300,000. Today, the same house in the affluent region of Sydney costs over $1.5 million. Australia is the result of successful capitalism, especially concerning taxes. In its economic model, there isn't much government intervention. The private sector completely dominates, without government competitors offering free services. Therefore, Australia boasts one of the strongest immigration systems globally, a flourishing tourism sector, an export of rich minerals in expansion high qualified labor, a vast amount of natural resources. And what allows Australia to be so wealthy is the quality of education. It shapes capable young individuals and teaches them how to become successful citizens from a young age. In elementary schools, they learn about laws, psychology, politics, careers and financial education. Children receive guidance and can gradually specialize in the subjects they wish to pursue in college. By the time they enroll, they are well prepared and have years of experience studying those subjects. Education has the power to build an entire country. And you probably already know that Brazil has more resources than Australia and could be just as good. But the Brazilians' general education resources compared to Australia's are still in their infancy.
And so, they fall behind. And although everything in Australia is eccentric and fascinating, the enormous outback desert holds a secret. There is an American military base in the center of this desert, with ultra-secret activities. And I will leave you with this video, where we show you why there is an ultra-secret American base in the center of the Australian desert. And of course, if you made it this far, leave it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. See you next time!